huge one here. Indiana gets Umar Balo. This was heavily rumored. This is the best center that has been in the portal this season to me. Maybe that'll change. I don't know that it will. I think this is probably the best center anybody's going to get in the transfer portal. Mike Woodson's crushing right now. Uh, Umar started on Arizona the last two seasons. He started 71 games on teams that won a bunch of games. His numbers actually went a bit down from junior to senior year. That's what happens when Caleb Love joins your team. But he averaged 13 points a game, 10 rebounds, 1.3 blocks, shot 66% from the floor. He's just a great finisher around the bucket. He's a behemoth. I mean, this is a guy that really only like the Zach Edies of the world we're physically ready for in college basketball. He's seven foot. He's 260 pounds. He's going to be the biggest and best big in the big 10 conference next season. And I'm not really hesitant to say that, even though there's still teams trying to add other front core guys can't shoot free throws though. 49% free throw shooter. That could be a problem. And uh, there are some people loudly concerned about the Malik Renu Umar Balo fit, but I'm not. And I'm excited to talk this, uh, t- talk about this with you. How do you feel about Indiana landing Umar? I I think that, you know, I like the approach of what Woodson is doing. Like, I think last season, we talked about this a lot on previous Indiana videos. The the lack of talent was massive in in the past couple, and at least in last year's Indiana team, in my opinion. Outside of Khalil Ware and Malik Renault, with all due respect to Trey Galloway, outside of that, the talent was lacking on this team. It's not in this case. Um, And... One of the good, one of the points that I even give you credit on this because you talked me into it. I was a part of the 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 belief. I was like, okay, Malik renews the center, right? Surround him with other guys playing Baco at the four. See what that looks like. Do you hear that? No. Sorry, an ad just popped up on one of my pages, and it just freaked me out like greatly. Like it was like some weird voice. My apologies. Um, it's okay. Uh, but I, I I like this ad because, and to your credit, you you kind of showed me the light on this. You can you can you don't have to play Balo and Renault together if it's not working. Like I think you can mix and match, but at the same time, yes, maybe they can't shoot, but like also like shooting isn't everything, guys. Like there's teams that like don't shoot that well that are still successful. I mean, UConn went through the whole tournament, and granted, it's a whole different beast, but UConn shot like. 30% from three, the whole tournament as a, as a team, like they, and they still won basketball games. So it is something that can happen. And I do think they have capable shooters on their team. It's not like they're just the brokest team of all time. I don't know. I think that this is one of the best front courts in the country. I think a lot of other front courts are going to struggle with them. Like front court struggled last year with them. And you combine that with, they have talent on the wing and the back court unlike last season, Indiana's cooking. They're doing really good things. I like, I really like to add. Yeah, I said it before they even got Balo, but it was presuming they were going to get Balo. Mike Woodson is the winner of the offseason to me. And we sat here on this program a month ago and made a video after Liam McNeely decommitted where we essentially condemned the Mike Woodson era. We said Indiana was crazy for bringing him back. The alums, the donors were out on him. He wasn't going to get support. He was going to lose key players. He was going to have a hard time even building a roster this season. That set aside your skepticism of whether or not he could actually coach That was the concern, was how is he going to build a roster when everybody's out on him in this era? All he's done since, get Trey Galloway back, announce it on senior day. Get Mackenzie Mbako back. He could have portaled and or gone to the league. Uh, Get Malik Renu back. He could have absolutely portaled if he was upset about clunky fits with front courts in the past. Land, not one, but he's about to land two Pac-12 superstar freshman guards that have three years of eligibility left. And oh, by the way, here's one of the top three centers in the country with it. Oh, and I haven't even mentioned Bryson Tucker, who's the top 20 recruit in the country. So Mike Woodson has, like, wasted no time. One, there's programs, you and I's programs both collectively have not signed a player in the portal. I mean, shit, man. Combine the budget Michigan State's going to spend on transfers with the budget Michigan's going to spend on transfers with the budget Purdue won't spend on transfers. Michigan State, Michigan, and Purdue aren't even going to spend what Mike Woodson spent this week all summer. like. At a, at a certain point, money matters. And I, it's, I think Woodson deserves a bunch of credit for the way he's handled this. Like He watched last season be a disaster and in two weeks said, not going to happen again. I fixed it. Now, I'm not poor. I'm not poor. It's incredible. And it, these are good players. These are really good players. A lot of people are upset about the Balo Renew fit. 
talk to me on that. Do you think it's going to be a problem? Uh, n- the only reason I don't think it's going to be a problem is because I think Malik Renault is very versatile. Like, I think that he's going to be able to stretch the floor a little bit. Um, there is going to have to be a jump from him, I think, to make it work a little bit better. But I think he can make that jump. I think he has the ability to do so. I think he has the ability to play make. Um, and I think that it will give the – I think Renew is going to have to be the guy that kind of pulls the big out while leaving Balo down low. Uh, and I think that Renew can make other teams respect his jumper a little bit. So I think it will work, but it will take some – I think it will take some improvements from uh, Malik Renew to make it work. I just don't think you have to play them together much. Like the way I view this is they both start because you want to give them the title of starting probably, but like play them together for like eight minutes a game max, play them both at center 20 minutes. Boom. They they both play 28 minutes. I think they're both ecstatic with that. I don't think either one of these guys needs 35 minutes. The most Umar Balo has ever played in his life is 27 minutes a game. Like mm. this, this works. They're going to have the best front court in the big 10 automatically because they're going to have 40 great minutes at center. Both these guys have been foul prone throughout their careers. Now you never have to worry about foul fouling out. Like these guys can kind of do whatever they want. And I think when they are together, okay, if the shooting's as bad as people say it is, they're going to beat people, just destroy them on the offensive boards. So like, I think it works. I don't think they have to play together all game. I think anybody who's pointing at this fit and being like, it's the same problem as last year is greatly underestimating how much the problem was last year. Just they didn't have good players. Like Gabe cups had to play 30 minutes, a lot of games for this team. He, he's horrible. Like Anthony Leal and CJ gun were like your fifth and sixth men last year when Xavier Johnson was out. They're bad. Like this, this wasn't just Woodson insisted on playing bad front court players together. It was, he had a roster that had no guards and it was Woodson's fault. He had a roster with no guards. That's not going to be a problem again this year because he just got two great guards. Mackenzie Mbako's back. Bryson Tucker's a talented kid that can play the guard spots. He has four options this season that uh, to me are as good, if not better than guys he had alongside Renew and Galloway last year. And uh, I think it's going to look completely different. And anybody assuming last year's problems will plague this next year's team. I think is wrong and looking at it the completely wrong way. Balo is going to be the best player on this team though. Right? Like regardless of what renew does, uh, unless one of the guards like takes a big leap that we don't necessarily see coming. I think like Balo is probably a first team, all big 10 player without question. Right. I still think Malik Renault is the best player on the team. (sighs) I think Balo is so much better than Renault. Uh, I disagree. This is why it's a luxury for Mike Woodson because people can disagree and both are justified. But like, I, B- Balo is such a walking double double in his sleep. Hey, I mean he's a he's a physical just, just, just mad. Like you know, physically he's just crazy. But I think Malik Renault brings a little bit more versatility. He does. He definitely does. Um, to me, if you build a team around Malik Renault, I don't think you ever win championships. I think you can build a team around Balo that wins championships this year. Oh, I disagree um, with that too. I think it's the other way around. <laughs> wow, we're we're on opposite sides. I guess that's a luxury for Mike Woodson that you have people that you can feel that way about. Um, the nice thing for me when when teams try to go hack a Balo, which happened a lot to Arizona at the end of games last season, just take them out, put Renew in with the other four, and things will work. Again, I got to reiterate, you don't have to play these two together. Everyone assumes Mike Woodson's going to play these guys together like 30 minutes a game. He's not going to. He doesn't need to. And I think people are really overstating how dumb Mike Woodson is. He's not that dumb. This team was really good two years ago. Like well, They might be assuming it because they, he played where and Balo. I'm sorry, not he played where. I know it's different, but like he might play Renew and Balo together the whole time. He no, might. No, he won't. No chance. I I really like I get that's how last year's roster was built. He had no choice. Once Xavier Johnson went down, they only had three and a half playable players. Like you had to play those guys constantly. Otherwise, you were playing Leal or Gunn or Peyton Sparks, like or Cups. Sparks. Half the time you were playing Cups. So it didn't it was it was the the bench guys giving you nothing that forced his hand to play those guys. I don't think he's going to always do this. And I know he he played two bigs with Race Thompson and Trace Jackson Davis as well. 
I will say this. If this year Woodson plays the two bigs 30 minutes a game together and it doesn't work, then yeah, he's going to be on the hottest seat ever because this year's team should be really good. And if this team's not really good, it is Mike Woodson's in-game coaching that costs them. But I'm telling you, I'm going to be beating this drum all offseason. I think Woodson's crushing it and he's not done. That's the big thing. Everybody's treating this roster cart like it's a finished product. He still has three more scholarships open and money to spend. Like they're they're hosting Connor Asijian today. They're calling Kobe Brea. Like people are acting like this roster has no shooting. Give it two weeks. It's gonna have shooting. It's gonna go buy some of the best shooters in the portal. And if you just put one great shooter on this team, let alone two good shooters on this team, it's one of the best rosters in the entire country. It's true. It's true. But unfortunately, as much as I respect what he's doing. I can never go full Hoosier until I see it because I I'm I respect what Mike Woodson is doing. I'm not a Mike Woodson believer. I'm a Mike Woodson believer officially. These last two weeks have won me. Like I hope I become one. It's incredible. Also, I want to give Indiana Nation credit for uh, hosting what I believe has been the best player visit this entire summer. Yeah, why weren't we hosted like that when we went for college hoops to go? Crazy, but just people talking about, oh, we sent $10 Venmos to Umar. He probably made thousands of dollars in Venmos that night. Uh, he's at the upstairs bar. I think he went to Knicks. Like, it, Bloomington showed this man a good time. Gabe Cups crashed his photo shoot. Good vibes all around, man. It, it, I'm just excited about this. I'm really, really excited for Indiana fans that they get this kid. If you've been watching our videos this season, you know that we are presented by my bookie. Carter, tell the people about my bookie. My bookie is the official sports book of Sleepers Media. They have everything you need from expert predictions, write-ups. I mean, any 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 way you want to bet, my bookie makes it easy for you to play your way and get paid. And right now, Gregory, we have an instant deposit bonus up to a thousand dollars. All you have to do is use promo code Sleepers. That's promo code Sleepers. Take advantage of this great offer today and everything that my bookie has to offer. Yeah, the NCAA tournament may be over. The madness. Maybe it's put to bed for a little bit. But college basketball is still rocking. It's transfer portal season. NBA playoffs are coming soon. There's still a ton to bet on, and you should bet with us at MyBookie. The link is in the description of this video. Use promo code SLEEPERS.